Hello everyone. In today's session, we'll be seeing CBSE Grade 8 Science, Chapter 18, Pollution of Air and Water. So what is pollution? When air, water or land is contaminated with unwanted substances which are harmful to both living and non-living organisms, it is called pollution. Substances that cause the pollution are known as pollutants. So in today's session, we'll be seeing about air and water pollution. We all know that air is a mixture of gases. It is composed of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and the rest 1% is composed of carbon dioxide, argon, methane, ozone, and water vapor. So what is air pollution? When air is contaminated by unwanted substances which have a harmful effect on both living and non-living organisms are known as air pollution. So how does the air get polluted? Substances or agents which contaminate the air are known as air pollutants. Air pollute, pollution happens in two ways. One is naturally and other man-made. Naturally what happens is whenever volcanoes erupt, they emit lots of toxic gases which can go and pollute the air and most of the most common reason for air pollution is human activities like burning of firewood, vehicular pollution and pollution from the industries are the major reason for air pollution. Some of the air pollutants are carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxides and smoke. Especially this carbon monoxide is a very poisonous gas. What happens is, we all know that our body, we take in oxygen because of a pigment called hemoglobin which is present in the red blood cells. The oxygen gets itself binded to hemoglobin. But what happens is this carbon monoxide or CO has greater affinity towards hemoglobin. So, it will go and attach itself to human hemoglobin and would prevent oxygen to go and get attached itself to the hemoglobin. So what happens is the person's oxygen levels in the body decreases thereby leading to suffocation and death. Smog is another major air pollution. What is smog? Smog is combination of smoke and fog. The smog causes breathing difficulties such as asthma, cough and wheezing in children. Smoke contains oxides of nitrogen which combine with air pollution, pollutants and fog to smog, form smog. Sulfur dioxide is another major air pollutant. Sulfur dioxide is produced by combustion of fuels like coals in thermal power plants. Another air pollutant is CFC or chlorofluorocarbons. What these chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs does is they go and damage the ozone layer which is present in the atmosphere. This ozone layer is very important. How is it important? It prevents the entry of ultraviolet radiation or UV radiation into the earth. So what exactly these CFCs do is especially the chlorine present in CFCs they go and damage the ozone layer thereby making a hole in the ozone layer. Now since there is a hole the UV radiation can easily enter in through the hole and can cause several skin cancers. That's why it is very important for us to not use products made of CFCs like refrigerators, aerosols and sprays. Another major concern with respect to air pollution is acid rain. We all know that sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide are air pollutants. They cause respiratory inconvenience. But apart from that, when they mix up with water vapor, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide, when they mix up with water vapor, they make sulfuric acid and nitric acid which is literally acid falling on us as acid rain. This acid rain can be very disastrous for the monuments, humans and animals. Taj Mahal, one of the greatest monuments of India, which is one of the seven wonders of the world, is being affected by acid rain. And also soot particles produced by industries in and around Mathura make the white marbles yellowish in color and damage them. So how do we deal with this problem of air pollution? It is very important for us to switch to cleaner fuels like CNG and LPG. CNG as the name suggests compressed natural gas and LPG liquefied petroleum gas are cleaner fuels and they do not 
emit so many pollutants and it is wiser for us to switch to renewable source of energy like hydroelectric power and wind energy another major concern with respect to air pollution is greenhouse effect what is greenhouse effect if you go to foreign countries colder countries what happens is for the plants to grow they hardly receive any sunlight so what they do is they keep the plants in a glass house or a greenhouse what happens is this glass acts as a heat trapper you can feel it you know when you sit inside the car with all the windows closed glass windows closed after 10 minutes you will start feeling the heat and suffocating that's because glass has the capacity to absorb the heat but it will not allow it to go outside the same happens in atmosphere also what happens is in the atmosphere there are certain gases called greenhouse gases what are they carbon dioxide methane water vapor nitrous oxide these are the gases which are known as greenhouse gases what they do is they trap the sun's radiation but they do not allow it to escape so what happens is naturally the earth's temperature gets increased this is increase in the temperature of the earth is known as global warming what happens if the surface temperature of the earth increases polar regions which consists of ice will start melting if ice starts melting water level will increase so sea levels will increase thereby leading to submergence of islands and coastal areas island nations like mauritius and maldives are always at the risk of getting submerged because of the increase in the surface temperature of the earth how does this increase happen it happens because of the gases like carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide and water vapor which traps the sun's heat but they do not allow it to escape back it's just like you sitting in the car with the windows closed you keep on trapping the heat inside the car similarly these gases keep trapping the heat inside the earth and they do not allow it to escape thereby leading to the increased surface temperature of the earth thereby melting the glaciers and increasing the water levels and submerging the islands which are very vulnerable when the surface temperature increases these are very harmful to lots of living organisms because they cannot tolerate even 1 degree rise in temperature coral reefs are the best examples which are severely affected by increase in temperature or global warming so what do we do we'll have to make make sure that co2 levels are reduced there is a protocol called kyoto protocol named after a place in japan to make sure that co2 emissions are reduced so what can be done overall to reduce air pollution we'll have to switch to cleaner fuels like cng lpg and we have to switch to renewable source of energy like hydel power and wind and we'll have to start planting more trees because plants acts as a sinks of carbon dioxide they absorb carbon dioxide so once carbon dioxide levels reduce naturally global warming is going to be reduced now we'll move to water pollution what is water pollution whenever harmful substances such as sewage toxic chemicals silt etc get mixed with water the water becomes polluted the substances that pollute the water are known as water pollutants in this session a case study of river ganga is given river ganga is considered one of the sacred rivers of india and it extends from himalaya till bay of bengal in the east and in the entire course of its flow there are lots of settlements and people dump waste sewage industrial waste even dead bodies into the river thereby polluting river ganga lots of efforts have been taken by the government to reduce the water pollution in ganga ganga action plan was launched in 1985 but it didn't prove to be effective so a national mission for clean ganga nmcg was launched in 2016 to reduce the water pollution in ganga if you look ganga i told you it extends from himalaya till the northeast but in the entire stretch kanpur is the one which is polluting ganga to the maximum because kanpur city has about 5000 industries where they let out all the industrial waste into the river ganga 
they have fertilizer industry detergent industry leather industry paint industry and all the waste from the industrial process are let into river ganga making it highly polluted you can see in the picture here dead bodies floating lots of industrial waste which are dumped into this makes the water highly polluted and highly unsafe for drinking another problem with this water pollution is that there are certain industries which uh, give out all the chemical rich water into the rivers or lakes what happens is these chemicals can uh, start the growth of plants algae and other small plants in the lake and they make sure that they grow very quickly taking in all the nitrates and all the chemicals they grow very quickly all of a sudden and their lifespan is also limited after some time they die then what happens is the bacteria which is present in the lake or the river they start decomposing the dead plants for them to decompose they will use up oxygen what happens is these bacteria keep on using all the oxygen levels in the water to decompose the dead plants and there will come a point where the lake will be completely devoid of any oxygen there will be no oxygen in the lake and when there are no oxygen in the lake what happens is the fish and other aquatic organisms they die very instantly this is a whole collapse of a river ecosystem or a lake ecosystem this process is known as eutrophication this is one of the major concerns with respect to water pollution so how do we deal with water pollution we we'll have to ensure that industries after they only after treatment they let out the water into the rivers or lakes and we we also should ensure that we always drink clean water we we'll have to boil them heat them uh, use ro to make sure that water is clean before we start drinking now we'll move to exercises first question is what are the different ways in which water gets contaminated water gets contaminated because of the effluents from the industries by throwing garbage by throwing dead bodies these are the ways in which water gets polluted second question at an individual level how can you help reduce air pollution at an individual level we can make sure that we don't burn things unnecessarily we don't burn plastics we don't use vehicles scooter or car for long so short distance we can instead use public transport and we can do carpooling to avoid air pollution third question is clear transparent water is always fit for drinking comment no clear transparent water is not always fit for drinking they might be mixed up with chemicals we don't know it might be transparent but unclear but it might have chemicals harmful chemicals dissolved in them so it's very important for us to get it treated before using them we'll have to filter them boil them to make sure that there are no remnants left fourth question you are a member of municipal body of your own town make a list of measures that you would help your town to ensure the supply of clean water to all its residents as a member of municipal body i would ensure that water is first stored in a very clean place it is treated with chlorine at with right amounts it is filtered and then it is sent to pipes to the villages fifth question explain the differences between pure air and polluted air pure air is when there are no pollutants the air is fresh and you can find pure air when you go to parks early in the morning where air is fresh you don't feel any choking or coughing or anything whereas polluted air is all mixed with different pollutants people might have sneezing allergies you won't have a feel good factor yes these are difference between pure air and polluted air question number 6 explain circumstances leading to acid rain how does acid rain affect us so acid rain is caused by majorly two pollutants sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide this sulfur dioxide mixes up with water to form sulfuric acid nitrogen dioxide mixes up with water to form nitric acid so these are literally acids falling as rain so what happens when literally acids fall on us they can give us skin allergies they can give uh, damage they can damage our iron grills they can damage the monuments they can damage the buildings so these are the effects bad effects of acid rain we move to seventh question which of the following is not a greenhouse gas 
कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज अ ग्रीन हाउस गैस सल्फर डाइऑक्साइड इज नॉट अ ग्रीन हाउस गैस मीटेन इज अ ग्रीन हाउस गैस नाइट्रोजन इज नॉट अ ग्रीन हाउस गैस सो क्वेश्चन नंबर एट डिस्क्राइब द ग्रीन हाउस इफेक्ट इन योर ओन वर्ड्स ग्रीन हाउस इफेक्ट इज कॉस्ड बाय सर्टन गैसेस कॉल कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड मीथेन वाटर वेपर नाइट्रस ऑक्साइड वॉट दे डू इज दे ट्रैप सन्स रेडिएशन बट दे डू नॉट अलाउ इट टू पास थ्रू देर बाय इंक्रीजिंग द टेम्परेचर ऑफ द अर्थ सो दिस इंक्रीज इन द टेम्परेचर ऑफ द अर्थ इज नोन एज ग्लोबल वार्मिंग ग्रीन हाउस इफेक्ट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज ग्लास हाउस इफेक्ट बिकॉज ग्लास वेन यू सिट इन ग्लास रूम फॉर अ लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम अंडर द सन यू स्टार्ट फीलिंग द हीट दैट्स बिकॉज ग्लास अब्जर्व द हीट and doesn't let go same happens with our earth also this is known as greenhouse effect question number 9 prepare a brief speech on global warming you have to deliver the speech in your class what is global warming global warming is increase in the surface temperature of the earth how does this increase happen it happens because of greenhouse effect what is greenhouse effect as told earlier gases like carbon dioxide methane water vapor they trap sun's radiation but they do not allow it to escape thereby leading to the increase in the temperature of the earth so this leads to global warming which is not very good for islands and coastal areas as they will be prone to submergence it is not very good for living organisms also because they cannot tolerate even slight change in the temperatures question number 10 describe the threat to the beauty of taj mahal taj mahal is one of the seven wonders of the world the problem with taj mahal is that acid rain and certain uh, soot particles emitted by industries seem to be harming taj mahal acid rain what is acid rain you have gases like nitrogen uh, nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide which mix with water vapor to form sulfur dioxide and uh, nitric acid sulfuric acid thereby literally falling as acid rain which is da damaging the building of taj mahal question number 11 why does the increased level of nutrients in the water affect the survival of aquatic organisms as discussed this process is known as eutrophication what happens when increased levels of nutrients from the chemical factories enter the water it will start the growth of plants aquatic plants they'll grow very quickly in a very short period of time and probably their life span is very limited they'll die after some time once they die what happens is the microbes present in the water lake or river they want to decompose the dead plants what they do is they'll decompose in the process they use up the oxygen which is present in the lake they have to use the oxygen to break it so what happens is your lake or river will be completely devoid of oxygen there will be no oxygen in your lake so what happens there will come a point where there will be no oxygen in the lake and instantly what happens is the aquatic organisms the fishes present in the lake or river they die instantly it leads to the collapse of the whole ecosystem lake ecosystem and it will give a very bad picture and the whole system is completely collapsed so that's why it's very important not to let out nutrients into the lake or river if you have any doubts you can leave your comments in the comment section thank you